السلام عليكم و we'll talk today about SSI surveillance for the SSI updates we will speak about the SSI updates in the last uh, few years uh, before we start uh, speaking about updates this is a quick table to uh, compare the CLAPSI VAB County versus SSI CLAPSI, CAB, uh, VAB, County uh, are uh, members of the device associated. So the date of event in both is the first element to meet the criteria. Secondary BSI is present in County and VAB, but there is no secondary BSI after CLAPSI and also SSI. Secondary BSI attribution, it could be 14, 15, 16, 17 days for UTI and VAB, but it's always 17 days in uh, SSI, as we said, three days before the event, the date of the event, and 13 days after the date of event. For the pathogen assignment guidance, BSI pathogen are assigned to UTI and VAB uh, that uh, collected during the RIT. BSI pathogen in, uh, are assigned to SSI as well. Uh, for use of non-culture method is present in SSI, present in uh, some CLAPSI, uh, some VAB, uh, CAUTI, uh, we cannot have it in the urine for CAUTI, but we can have it for the blood for uh, asymptomatic bacteremic UTI. Present on admission is present in device associated infection, but this term is not present in SSI. Another similar term called BATUS, and this will be described in the next slides. Uh, is present uh, when infection is present at the time of surgery. Infection window, it is uh, always seven days in the three device associated infection. Uh, we don't have window in SSI, but uh, symptoms should be within seven to 10 days, no more than two uh, days uh, between different items. Um, and uh, you have here 30 to 90 days follow up according to the type uh, of uh, SSI. Uh, diagnostic test for the device associated could be a lab specimen collection or imaging in VAB. It's not uh, applicable in SSI. Device removal and, and reinsertion is not uh, applicable in SSI. Repeat time, infection time frame is not applicable in uh, SSI. Several changes happened in 2013 for SSI. Uh, there was post-procedure pneumonia, which was removed. Uh, no, no data on implants. New post-discharge surveillance time periods, 90 or 30 days. New definition for primary skin closure. Uh, priority list is updated. It changes in 15. BATUS was introduced, and uh, we will describe this later. Uh, primary closure and non-primary closure also definition for the second time was updated. The new definition for inpatient and outpatient uh, and uh, uh, incidental uh, appendectomy procedure is not included in uh, appendectomy uh, category for SSI. In 2016, there was uh, introduction of non-culture diagnostic methods exclusion from community associated fungal pathogen as a cause of SSI and other HAI, updating intra-abdominal infection definition. In, to, in 2017 up to 2021 it changes, there is updating ICD-10 uh, list for uh, surgeries, uh, updating acceptable documentation for SSI surveillance methods, removal of the other group uh, from the procedure codes, uh, updating reporting more than one operative procedure through the same incisional, incis uh, incisional uh, incision uh, within 24 hours. Speaking now about the SSI criteria. So as we see in this slide, the skin has a superficial part, which is the skin and subcutaneous tissue, deep part, which is the fascia and muscles, and organ part, which include the intestine, the heart, the lung, and, and many other organs in the body. 
So they divide the uh, SSI into superficial, deep, and organ. For superficial and deep, it could be primary, primary incision, or secondary. So primary superficial incisional, or primary uh, deep incisional. Uh, also secondary superficial incisional and secondary deep incisional. For the organ, it is named by the name of the organ. So bone, breast, cardiac, disc, and so on. Uh, we will give you here example for two surgeries, the C-section and cabbage. These are the different uh, uh, diagnoses that can be done for SSI. For, for, if we take, for example, C-section, we have superficial, superficial incisional primary. We, we have deep incisional primary. We don't have secondary because C-section has only one primary incision. But we have organ uh, in, uh, SSI related to C-section, and this include the organ in the abdomen, uh, abd uh, endometritis, gastrointestinal infection, intra-abdominal infection, not otherwise specified, and so on. For the cabbage, we have primary incision, which is the, the schist incision, and we have donor incision with the leg incision. Since we have a, a secondary incision or donor incision, we could have superficial incisional primary, superficial incisional secondary, deep incisional primary, deep incisional secondary, and other or, organ infection that is related to the schist, including the bone, osteomyelitis, heart, Cardio, myocarditis or pericarditis, uh, endocarditis, and so on. Here we speak about the specific criteria for the superficial, deep, and organs. For the superficial, you have the following criteria. Uh, date of event occurs within 30 days after doing a surgery included in the NHSN operative procedure codes and involve only skin and subcutaneous tissue, so the superficial, and you have one of the following four criteria. The first one, you have virulent drainage from the superficial incision. The second one, organism identified from a septically obtained specimen from the superficial incision, and give you positive organism by culture or non-culture method. Or the incision is deliberately opened by the surgeon or other uh, designated staff, uh, and on the same time, there is signs of infection, including, including localized pain, tenderness, uh, localized swelling, erythema, or heat. The fourth uh, element that alone can stand for superficial incisional SSI is the, uh, defini is the diagnosis by physician or treating physician or treating surgeon. <laughs> As we said before, the superficial incisional SSI can be primary or secondary. Uh, we have superficial incisional primary in the primary incision, as in C-section, uh, and uh, superficial incisional secondary, as in infection, that uh, as in surgeries that have two uh, incisions, like cabbage, both schist and uh, leg incision. When you diagnose superficial incisional SSI, uh, the term physician for the purpose of application of NHSN definition must be interpreted as surgeon, infectious disease physician, emergency physician, or other related healthcare staff. The following do not qualify for the criteria for meeting NHSN definition for superficial incisional SSI. Diagnosis and treatment of cellulitis. Cellulitis is a skin infection. It's not a uh, surgical site infection. A stitch is abscess alone. It is very minimal discharge from the, uh, the stitch uh, entry point, and this is not considered uh, a superficial incisional SSI. Localized stab wound or pen site infection, depending on the depth, this infection might be considered either as a skin infection or soft tissue infection according to the depth of infection. So stab wound, uh, stitches, abscess, cellulitis are not considered superficial incisional SSI. The second type is deep incisional. Here, as we said before, superficial is only 30 days all the time. Here in deep and organ, it can be 30 or 90 according to the list of surgery shown before and involve Deeper tissue, which includes soft tissue and muscles, 
uh, fascia and muscles and you have one of the following three criteria virulent drainage from the deep incision uh, and the second one is deep incision is either spontaneously dehesed or deliberately open or aspirated by the surgeon or other designated staff and organism was obtained uh, by culture or non culture method uh, and one of these uh, localized symptoms are present fever localized pain or tenderness the third group is presence of abscess or other evidence of infection involving the deep incision which include the fascia and the muscle detected either on gross anatomical or histopathological examination or imaging technique and again deep can be considered deep primary or deep secondary according to the type of surgery if it's only one incision which is the primary incision like c-section it would be deep incisional primary if it happened in the secondary incision in some surgery that has a secondary incision like cabbage both it will be secondary deep incisional secondary organ space ssi is the third type and the deepest type of the ssi or the serious type of ssi and here date of events happen uh, within 30 to 90 days of the uh, nhsn operative procedure and again again this is according to the list shown to you before and involve organs deeper organs and these include uh, any type of organs we will show you a slide showing different types of organ space ssi and you have at least one of the following three criteria uh, virulent drainage uh, from the organ uh, and this is can be uh, obtained by uh, closed suction drainage system open drain a t tube drain ct guided drain so there is something that we can show that the virulent drainage come from deeper organ tissue uh, or spaces. Uh, organism identified from fluid or tissue in the organ space by culture or non-culture methods. And the third one is, uh, or uh, the, the third one is the abscess or other evidence of infection involving organ or space that is detected by either anatomical or histopathological or imaging uh, suggestive of infection. Plus, and most of us forget this last plus, uh, one of the specific criteria which is different from one type uh, of organ to another. And this is the list of organ space SSI. They have also codes three uh, to four uh, uh, letters, uh, abbreviation like bone, for example, for osteomyelitis, like I, A, B for intra-abdominal infection, not other specified. Uh, and I see intracranial infection, uh, SA spinal abscess infection, and so on. You can uh, read all of them to understand different uh, criteria, different types of organ space uh, SSI. Uh, for intra-abdominal infection, this is like an example of uh, uh, um, organ space SSI. Uh, it can be one of the following uh, criteria, one of three criteria. The first one is patient had organism identified from the abscess or virulent material from intra-abdominal space by culture or non-culture uh, methods. Or the patient has one of the following, abscess or other evidence of intra-abdominal infection by gross anatomical or histopathological examination, with or without uh, uh, presence of organism identified by culture or non-culture uh, microbiologic testing method. Uh, uh, the, th the third criteria is when you have uh, this updated criteria, your patient has at least two of the following uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, fever, hypotension, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain or tenderness, elevated transaminase or jaundice. So two of them is enough. And at least one of the following. Organism seen in gram stain or identified from intra-abdominal fluid or tissue obtained during invasive procedure or from aseptically placed drainage uh, in the intra-abdominal space like open drain, T-tube drain, CT guided drain by culture or non-culture method the second one 
is organism identified from the blood? And here it's not from the intra-abdominal fluid. Organism identified from the blood by culture or non-culture method, and the organism is one of the MBI organisms. So it is intestinal organism. And on the same time, you have imaging detecting uh, suggestive infection by any imaging means like ultrasound, CT scan, MRI, and so on. Uh, so in, if you have MBI organism detected from the blood and uh, evidence of uh, abscess or infection by imaging, and you have two of the above symptoms like fever and vomiting or femoral and nausea, you, will, uh, you, you can diagnose. And this is the updated definition as we said before. For the SSI reporting and instructions, you have an instruction for SSI events and a nominator. Uh, let's begin with the SSI events. And these including excluding organism, batus, attribution of multiple SSI, multiple tissue levels involved, procedure involving multiple primary incision sites, a uh, procedure that have secondary incision sites, invasion, uh, invasive manipulation of the operative site, and this is new one, non-primary closure, new one also public, uh, reporting new one. For excluding organism, uh, as other HAI, uh, uh, community associated fungal pathogen, uh, blastomyces, histoplasma, and so on. These uh, six organisms are not allowed to be a uh, cause for SSI or, H or other HAI. Organisms associated with latent infection, like uh, they present in the body and when the immunity uh, decrease, this infection uh, appears like herpes, uh, shingles, uh, syphilis, tuberculosis are not considered uh, organism for causing SSI. For batus, as we said, batus means infection present at the time of surgery, batus. So for the batus to be uh, diagnosed, this has to be noted intraoperatively. So the surgeon see the infection during the surgery and document this in the surgical notes. An abscess is considered evidence of an infection. One, the class cannot be uh, used for determining is it a, a batus or not. Uh, and uh, when SSI happen, it has to be on the same level of the documented infection noted by the surgeon at the time of surgery. So the surgeon uh, uh, documented there is infection intra-abdominal, uh, which is the organ space. Then SSI has to be organ space to be considered batus. But if it is superficial or deep, we will not consider this batus. It has to be the same depth noted during the surgery. Uh, examples that we accept for uh, uh, the, the notes in the, surgic, in the surgeon notes uh, that be considered as infection, the word abscess, infection, virulent, bus, uh, phlegmon, uh, fluctant uh, peritonitis, uh, eruption perforated appendix, all these are evidence of infection. Example that cannot be considered indicative of evidence of infection, so they indicate problems in the surgery, but that does not include, uh, does not indicate infection and, uh, and therefore does not indicate uh, batus. Uh, this including colon perforation, contamination, necrosis, gangrene, uh, fecal spillage, nickel bowel uh, during uh, procedure. Uh, remember that the only way that you uh, diagnose batus that the surgeon document the presence of infection, as we said, like abscess or virulence or something like that during the time of surgery. But one the class, culture results, uh, trauma status, imaging techniques cannot be used in determining this is batus or not. Example uh, of batus level, patient admitted, admitted to the OR, uh, admitted to the hospital with an acute abdomen sent to the OR, they made uh, exploratory laparotomy. They found uh, ruptured appendix and uh, infection, of course. Uh, patient returned two weeks with the intra-abdominal infection SSI. Since the appendix is an organ uh, and uh, the SSI is organ also, so we can accept this as batus. 
if the same patient admitted to the hospital uh, with the ruptured diverticulum and uh, another patient admitted to the hospital with ruptured diverticulum and went to the OR, the surgeon recommended there is multiple abscess in the intra-abdominal cavity since they, the surgeon said abscess, so we'll consider this infection at the time of surgery. Patient returned three weeks later with superficial SSI. Superficial SSI is not the same depth as BATUS detected during the surgery. During the surgery, when they say multiple abscess intra-abdominally, these are the organ or space but superficial is uh, the most superficial uh, one and since it is not the same depth we will not consider this uh, batus but uh, rather it is a regular SSI. Uh, if you have multiple SSI procedure associated HI attributed to procedure not to the location so if the patient has several NHSN operative procedure done uh, and then infection happened. Report the procedure code that was recently done. So if they have, for example, two surgery and they are separated by one month and you have infection uh, indicative of SSI, so you go to the most recent one, uh, the closest one. You may say, why don't you go to the uh, earlier, earlier one? Because usually SSI does not stay for more than a month. I show you the slide before. Uh, usually it is two to three weeks. So you take the closest one. This is most probably the, so the SSI is attributed to the most uh, closely in time uh, surgical procedure. If more than one NHSM procedure done through the same incision, attempt to, deter, to determine the procedure that is thought to be associated with the infection uh, will be done. If this is not uh, easy or not clear, here he, the, the patient did two surgeries through the same incision and they develop SSI, like for example, superficial SSI. How can we know which surgery of the two, since it is the same, it's the same uh, incision, how can we know which one is, uh, we should attribute the SSI to? Uh, usually this is very difficult and that's why they made a list and you should go with this list. So this is our attribution procedure level list and this is for the abdominal cavity and as you see the top procedures are highest risk procedure and lowest procedure, lowest surgery are the lowest risk procedure. So if the patient had two of these procedures like appendix and ovary and then he have SSI. So uh, which one should be uh, attributed to appendix? Because, because uh, appendix uh, comes uh, in severity before ovarian. As you see, ovarian number 18 and appendix number 12. So we take the first to come because the first to come is the highest risk one. There is another list, similar list, done for the chest for neuro neurosurgical and neck operative procedure. And again, for each one, you go from high to low, uh, choosing the highest risk procedure. So if you have multiple tissue levels involvement in the same uh, SSI, for example, you have the tissues in the deeper part as well as organ, you diagnose organ. If you have superficial and deep, you diagnose the deepest, which is the deep. Uh, if you have uh, SSI that start uh, deep and become organ, so you, you, of course, you choose the organ, which is the deeper one, but when you determine the date of event, please use the date of event of the organ, not the deep one, because sometimes it takes a week or so until the deeper tissue become organ space SSI. If you have multiple primary incisions uh, for the same operative procedure, uh, this happened uh, when you do, for example, uh, laparoscopy, you have multiple uh, incisions. Some of them have SSI superficial, some of them have SSI deep, uh, again, you report the deepest one, which is deep incisional uh, SSI.
if you have procedure with secondary incision, uh, remember that secondary incision is uh, followed only for 30 days. So if you have cabbage both, schist and leg incision, and you have saphenous vein harvested incision site uh, has infection, you follow up this for 30 days. Uh, after 30 days, you no follow up for the secondary incision, but for the primary incision, which is the schist incision, is 90 days. So it is the same patient. Uh, have secondary incision followed for 30 days and primary incision, the schist, schist incision is, is followed for 90 days. And if the patient has SSI in both, you report it to. And this is the, maybe the, this is the only example we can report to SSI in the same uh, patient. These are the list of procedures that have another secondary incision, like cabbage both, car car carotid end arterectomy, uh, colostomy, uh, reversal, spinal infusion with anterior and posterior approaches, and so on. Uh, if the operative site was manipulated, manipulated means the patient or the other healthcare staff play with the incision. So SSI is not considered if the following three criteria, all the following three criteria are met. During the post-operative procedure, the surgical site was clean without evidence, without, without evidence of infection. And some manipulation happened, invasive manipulation happened. And this is, uh, can be, for example, needle aspiration, access of ventricular shunt, and so on. And after that uh, manipulation, infection was detected to the same level of the manipulation. Uh, so in this case, we will not report this SSI because it is iatrogenic uh, infection. For public reporting uh, in the US, they choose to report uh, colon surgery uh, and hysterectomy abdominal approach, abdominal hysterectomy and hysterectomy. And the reporting guidance here is uh, uh, you, you only report deep incisional primary or organ as space SI in adults above 18 years, in patient procedure only, and detected by all surveillance, surveillance methods, including SSI identified in admission, readmission, and post discharge surveillance. Remember, they don't report pediatric. Uh, they don't include in this uh, public reporting pediatric SSI. They don't include superficial SSI. They don't include outpatient SSI. Uh, so these are excluded from reporting. And why they did this uh, criteria? Because they want to unify the way they are reporting SSI to the public. The question here, can we consider SSI if the skin was not uh, primary closed? We said before that non-primary closure means the skin level was uh, completely kept unclosed, uh, open uh, after the surgery. Before they said don't include this in SSI. Now they said no, include any SSI irrespective the primary skin closure happen or non-primary skin closure happen. The next set of reporting is the nominator reporting, and we have different procedure performed during the same trip to the OR, duration of surgery, revision of hip and knee replacement procedure, same procedure via separate incision, multiple procedure through the same incision within 24 hours, and this is new patient expire and the OR difference between hysterectomy or vaginal hysterectomy. Hysterectomy means abdominal hysterectomy and V has vaginal hysterectomy. So this is done for you in a form of table. So on the, in the, we will tell you the scenario and what should you do uh, in collecting the data. For two procedures performing during the same trip to the operative room to the, through the same incision as when they do cardiac surgery and cabbage surgery through the same schist incision. Here it is two surgeries, so you fill two forms. If you are doing surveillance for the two surgery, but what if you are doing surveillance for cabbage but not cardiac, you fill one form for cabbage. And for cardiac, yes, it's another surgery, but we don't make surveillance. 
if you make surveillance for both, you fill two forms, even though they are two procedures done through the same incision. And only exception for this, if you do cabbage schist only, and then you uh, uh, convert this to cabbage schist and leg both. Yani. So they started the surgery as schist only, but for somehow this failed and they had to do another secondary incision in the leg to get the saphenous vein. In this case, it is one surgery, so one form, and this is the only exception. You have two surgery, two different surgery, and you still fill one form because it is the same surgery, but they changed this from schist only to both schist and leg. So the only exception. So if you have uh, the, 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 the criteria is if you have two surgery, you fill the form, except if the two surgeries are cabbage C and cabbage B. Here you have bilateral procedure performed during the same trip to the operating room through the same incision. And this can happen only, uh, I think, in abdomen. Uh, you, uh, you have right and left hernia done by uh, laparoscope. Uh, and in this case, you fill a form. Although it's right and left, you fill one form because it is one uh, surgery. But if you have uh, bilateral procedures done through two separate incisions, so you will consider each one is a separate surgery. So if you have right and left knee replacement, right and left uh, hernia, uh, uh, hernia through two different incisions, right uh, hip and, uh, and left hip uh, 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 surgeries, these are two forms, two surgeries. Uh, and actually for the time, uh, what you are going to do is uh, record the time for the right alone, left alone. If this is not possible in the surgery, surgery notes, then you collect the total time and divide it by two. If you have a single procedure with multiple incision, uh, like if the patient developed two SSI primary uh, or uh, and the secondary, both are reported. So in cabbage, both, as we said, this we, we we told you about this example before. If you have a deep incision in the schist, in, you, you have cabbage, both, and you have, for example, deep SSI in the primary incision and superficial SSI in the secondary incision, you report both. And this is maybe the only example that we report two SSI in the same patient, the same surgery. Here you have two operative procedures performed during the same trip to the OR through separate incisions. So you have two different surgery done through two separate incision like open reduction of fracture and splenectomy. Here you have, as I said, you have two surgeries, two incisions, two forms. Uh, for the time, if it is difficult to uh, calculate the time for each surgery, you combine both and, the, and divide by two. If you have two operative procedure within 24 hours done through the same incision, uh, for example, if the patient had cabbage both uh, that lasted for four hours, and then after a few hours, uh, they develop, uh, the patient developed complication and they took the patient to make another surgery, which is card uh, for one and a half hours. So now you have 5.5 hours total during the 24 hours. Uh, this is, since it is um, uh, done through the same incision and uh, on the same 24 hours, uh, we will fill only one form and the total duration uh, for cabbage, uh, will, for, for that uh, form uh, will be the total, total duration for cabbage and cardiac, so it is 5.5 hours. Replacement of both mitral and tricuspid valves during the same trip to the OR, both are card. And you did card and another card. So it is card one form total duration of the replacement of mitral and tricuspid valves. You have total or partial revision of hip or knee replacement is performed. Uh, it is total or partial revision uh, is one form and it is one surgery. Of course, the duration is total duration. 
If the patient expire in the OR, we exclude them from the surveillance. Maybe it looks weird for you, but uh, because the patient dies, there is no uh, possibility of developing SSI. So they are excluded. If you have hysterectomy, uh, you fill one form, but you make sure uh, it should be reported as either abdominal hysterectomy, and this is uh, abbreviated as HIST, or uh, uh, VHIS uh, vaginal hysterectomy uh, based on the approach. And uh, you will see the approach here. Different approaches. Uh, so if they use one of these, you design the form as hysterectomy or vaginal hysterectomy according to the approach. For the SSI data analysis, uh, this is the form uh, that we collect the data. Uh, I know that you use Hassan uh, in collecting the data or the new system that uh, is working now. Uh, but uh, the idea is the same information present here. Uh, uh, name of uh, operative procedure, admission, discharge date, is it, is it is emergent, trauma, general anesthesia, diabetes, uh, risk index category. Uh, um, SSI happen, uh, and if happen, what type of SSI? Uh, like superficial, primary or secondary, deep primary or secondary or organ. And you have the items for uh, risk index category, as we said, ASS score, wound class, and procedure duration, uh, and so on. Um, uh, also, we record the, um, the organism and identify if this organism are MDRO or not. So for, for the analysis, SSI rate is uh, calculated via dividing SSI events over the number of surgeries done, multiply this in 100, and we do this separately for each type of procedure. So we don't do all surgery together. So we do rate for cabbage, rate for C-section, rate for cholecystectomy, and so on. And Additionally, we stratify the rate by risk index category. So if you have risk index category zero, what is the rate in zero operation? What is the rate in one in an operation that have a score of one? Uh, what is the rate uh, of SSI in operation have a score of two or three and so on? Uh, SSI SIR is uh, calculated by dividing the number of observed SSI and ex over expected SSI. Observed you detect it during the surveillance. Expected you calculate from the standard uh, uh, reports like NHSN or MOH uh, reports, and you do this by multiplying the number of procedure done uh, times the uh, NHSN SSI rate or MOH SSI rate. And remember that we don't calculate the SIR unless the expected SSI number is one or more. Before they were uh, reporting the SSI rate according to the date of event, and this is very important. Uh, for example, uh, if somebody had the surgery in February, uh, mid-February, like 15 February, and had the infection in the first week of March, so should we consider this infection uh, with February or March? Uh, so before they were taking the date of event, the date of March, uh, but starting 2015, they take the date of the surgery, not the date of event. So they are reported. So this type of infection, although it happened in March, it is uh, going to the same month of the surgery, not the date of events. And remember that SSI rate uh, so far include the pathos, our patient procedures, and uh, surgeries that non-primary uh, closed. Uh, closed. Uh, so this is uh, some good notes about SSI uh, reporting. Uh, this is additional for you. You can, you if you want to know that it would be better. This is reporting models, and actually the first model is everything is reported. This is what usually we do. 
when we have uh, we report the superficial deep and organ space we report those included in during hospital admission and after uh, the charge including post discharge surveillance we include inpatient and outpatient and so on but there is other models as we said uh, designed for reporting for example uh, in the complex uh, ARS SSI model they include only deep and organ space not superficial they include SSI uh, inpatient but not outpatient uh, they include, uh, uh, of course, SSI detected by uh, during admission, during after discharge, including uh, um, only if the procedure is performed in this in the same uh, facility. Uh, there is another one which is called the complex 30. SSI day. This you include in plan colon and hysterectomy. This is very similar to the reporting of H of USA, as we said, colon hysterectomy in adults only, uh, only deep and organ no superficial. Include admission readmission, uh, irrespective of the facility uh, where the the procedure is done. And as you see, this table summarizes the different models of reporting. So your hospital can choose to report one, it can, can use one of these models in reporting. In the all SSI model, which is the commonly used here, is everything is reported, only the pediatric SSI. For the complex AR SSI model adult, there is adult and pediatric, as you see. Uh, you report for in the adult you don't report the pediatric you don't report the superficial ssi you don't report the ssi detected during post discharge surveillance and detected due to surgery done in another facility and remember this model uh, surgeon would like it very much because surgeon uh, get uh, nervous when you detect uh, superficial uh, incisional uh, ssi and by the way superficial are the most common so and the most common and the least serious. So you can consider this model uh, focus on the severe uh, one that has been done in our hospital. If you look at the, the last column, it is the reporting, uh, public reporting one. It's colon hysterectomy only, not all surgeries. We don't report uh, uh, pediatric less than 18 years. We don't report uh, superficial. We don't report uh, deep or organ SSI uh, that uh, detected after 30 days. So it's only within 30 days SSI. And as we uh, showed you before in the slide that indicating the time of incident SSI, this include the majority of SSI because only 20% of SSI happen outside uh, the first month after the first month and in case of colon and hysterectomy the number is much less than uh, 20%. Thank you very much for listening to this long long uh, lecture.